In the upcoming elections, infrastructure and infrastructure spending will take a central role in many town halls across the nation. For about 70 years, presidents and other thinkers have been looking to figure out how to create fresh water from salt water at a cheap or competitive rate. What if the answer to this question is staring us right in the face today, now, and we can use some infrastructure spending to desalinate vast amounts of water for the 40 million Americans that live in the Colorado River Basin. In this image, north is to the left. In Mexico, Mother Nature, the local native tribe, and many in the federal government are looking to allow Mother Nature to reflood Laguna Salada. It's already happening. Evaporation rates from this area are extreme, among the highest in the world due to really hot, dry winds that blow in from the west. We've been there. We've observed it. We've documented it. We've surveyed it. It's happening on a monthly basis during high tide events. This area is at high risk from sea level rise, earthquakes, subsidence, and erosion. The Salton Sea and surrounding agriculture will receive less water over the next few decades. Let's face it, the coastal cities need more water. It's a real thing. With this in mind, a primary question comes into being. Should we evaporate more seawater or salt water to replace the evaporation of fresh water? It would certainly enhance the environment on screen now and all downwind environments in the Colorado River Basin. You may have heard of a recent study released where 40 million people who depend on the Colorado River for their water needs may be facing a far drier future. In the Southwest, a trillion dollars a year of economic activity depends on water. Everything from farms to permits, entitlements for building houses. To have a functioning city, you need both power and water. Farms and food are a pretty good idea, too. For about the last 20 years, PhDs like Dr. David Mitchell of the Desert Research Institute have been conducting studies and building regional climate models that predict the strength and direction of things like monsoons and hurricanes. These models are the basis for weather forecasting. The goal of this video and fundraiser is to raise sufficient funds to conduct a regional climate model under a couple of different circumstances and to increase public awareness of the impacts of current policies. Dr. Mitchell was kind enough to recommend Dr. Wolfmeyer to do this study, uh, which would cost fifty to $63,000 dollars um, U.S., Personally, I kind of like the idea of having an outside neutral observer conduct the study to avoid some of the politically charged environment that we currently exist in. The white square would be the domain of the study, and we'd study inputs and outputs that affect the North American monsoon from about June 1 through August. We will be studying the impacts from two different options or scenarios moving forward. The one on the left is the state's vision. The one on the right is ours. I personally encourage skepticism, so for any skeptics out there, please get onto Google Earth. Click the clock on the top toolbar to access historic images. Option B was taken in 1984. Currently, and under possible Option A future conditions, hot, dry desert winds come in from at least three different directions, and form an inversion layer in over Mexicali and over the northern gulf. From the northern gulf through Mexicali, it's this side of the model that prevents all this moisture from moving north and starting the monsoon. Today, with a dry Laguna Salada, the North American monsoon starts when sea surface temperatures in the northern gulf move from 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. If we flood Laguna Salada, we essentially outflank the enemy and turn a hot, dry input into a hot, wet input. The evaporation rate from Laguna Salada is massive, just shy of 8 lineal feet per unit of surface area. 
the evaporation rate from the Salton Sea is still massive, six feet per unit area. But why less? Why the difference? To put this in perspective, evaporation from the Dead Sea is only four to five feet per unit of surface area. At about 30 to 35 degrees north latitude all around the world, Hadley and Farrell cells, part of the global circulation system, descend. Cold, dry air becomes hot, dry air as it approaches sea level. These desert bands are known as the horse latitudes. This is a well-known fact about living on planet Earth, and because the Earth is spinning in a thing called the Coriolis effect, Waters evaporated from Laguna Salada in the northern Gulf tend to move into the Colorado River Basin. On the 4,500 to 5,000 foot mesa directly to the west of Laguna Salada, the wind power sector has identified a massive area of the highest potential for wind energy. Here, a relatively weak onshore flow is compressed, accelerates, and actually creates the path of least resistance for descending Hadley cell air. This is hot, dry air that moves across Laguna Salada and creates that massive uh, evaporative rate. Annual evaporation from Laguna Salada is expected to be about 1.6 million acre feet a year. This should be more than sufficient to break down the existing model and cause more convection earlier in the season and probably have it last longer. Please read this quote from President Kennedy, because if the evaporation from Laguna Salada does break down the model and cause more moisture to come north from the uh, Gulf of California, this is what we'll get, and most of that water will go up behind Hoover Dam. Annual evaporation from Laguna Salada will only be about 1.6 million acre feet a year, but it's just a firing cap for the entire shotgun shell. It's going to release the moisture over the Gulf of California at an earlier date and may intensify uh, monsoonal precipitation and maybe year-round precipitation. Water levels behind Hoover Dam are going from bad to worse. Water levels behind the dam are so low that the power rating for the dam has been reduced from 2,000 megawatts to 1,600 megawatts. Supply and demand for irrigation and or drinking water is getting out of balance. Prices are going to go up, and this is going to be like a tax on the economies of western cities and farms. Essentially, since California tried to take over the water cycle and control it, water in the Colorado River, annual flows, has been reducing. However, in every data set available, there are these pesky bumps in the early 80s and late 90s that seem to have no real explanation until you compare them with the flooding of Laguna Salada. There are lots of other possibilities, but for generally every year when both Laguna Salada and the Salton Sea were flooded, you typically got a pretty wet season for the Colorado River. It's certainly worth taking a closer look, don't you think? Most of the U.S. population would recognize a diagram like this, and the vast majority believe that man does have some influence. Practitioners of Western water policy would have you throw this diagram out the window. Conserve and transfer policies have become predominant, which pretty much means that anything that evaporates or transpirates water in California is subject to fines and penalties. I hope we all can remember that the Southwest does have lots and lots of national parks and forests. It is a big carbon sink. Water evaporated from this area generally flows across the lower Colorado Basin and into the upper basin where it condenses and falls as rain and waters many of the parks and trees, forests, what have you. It's important to understand that the green agricultural areas, the dried Laguna Salada, the Salton Sea are some of the most dynamic places in the world. Some anthropogenic, caused by man. Others are millions of years old, like the tectonics causing Baja California to separate from the continent and form the Rift Valley or the Gulf of California. 
to really understand this area and project, you got to understand that the entire northern gulf used to be open ocean, only filled in by silts and sands from the Colorado River and essentially the Grand Canyon. The Salton Sea itself has flooded and drained many, many times, sometimes larger, sometimes smaller, and probably having an impact on regional weather. Today, zero flows from the Colorado meet the Gulf of California. Therefore, no more silts and sands are being deposited. What do you think happens when the Rift Valley continues to rift and there's no more silts and sands? Again, Google Earth can help us answer this question. Now, you may not have the overlay from the scientific study of the liquefaction that occurred in the 2010 earthquake, but you can click back and forth between 2009 and 10. This is 2010, 2009. 2010 again. With no silts and sands to fill it in, this area will continue to grow and it actually helps us to flood Laguna Salada. We have the general design ready and are ready for engineering and other studies. We can create a living, breathing estuary and Laguna Salada and have enough extra seawater to save the Salton Sea. With both of these in place, we should have a cooler and wetter Colorado River Basin. Without them, it will most certainly be hotter and drier. Building this basic infrastructure will save the Pacific Flyway, the Salton Sea, aquatic environments, even downwind forests and riparian environments. The total project cost should be around $2 billion. It should produce far more fresh water than $2 billion worth of desalinization plants. Once the infrastructure is complete, the area is perfect for wind, solar, pumped hydroelectric storage, seawater agriculture and biofuels, community restorations, and massive opportunities for tourism and recreation. These opportunities exist about equally on both sides of the border. Please donate today. We need to get these studies and the engineering for this project off the ground. If you would like to invest in our company or learn more about us, please visit us at agisinc.com, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. We may not be able to save the planet, but the Southwest is a good little corner to start in. Thank you for your time. We look forward to hearing from you.